Okay, just a quick video for you while I'm fighting some uh, Atmel software problems. I was watching this uh, tutorial video on Fusion 360 by this guy. He posts uh, really, really great uh, tutorial videos every now and then. And today he was talking about photogrammetry, which is a technique where you take multiple pictures of an object around from all different angles, and then the software turns it into a 3D manageable object. You can edit it, you can print it out, uh, you can apply texture to it and lighting and make it look beautiful. So he was showing as an example uh, where the Smithsonian asked Autodesk to come in and actually do an entire 3D scan of the inside of the Apollo 11 command module. And this is what they came up with. And so the Smithsonian has actually made this available online. So what did I do? So I jumped immediately over to the Smithsonian website, which is 3d.si.edu slash Apollo 11 CM for command module. And you can see they have a kind of a virtual reality view, a 3D view of sitting inside the command module. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can look around. They've even found some graffiti that the uh, astronauts left that they had written on the inside of the capsule that nobody knew about, even the Smithsonian, before they did this. So, down below they actually make the 3D objects available for download. Here's the command module exterior, a pilot seat from the command module, a control panel knob, and two uh, instrument sections inside. Okay, I drop the capsule into my Simplify 3D. I sized it and positioned it such that the back of it is right against the back edge and the front of it is just sticking out a little bit because I have that glass plate in place. Uh, it's touching the bottom, but you can see the, the underside is a little rough from coming through the atmosphere, got a little toasty, and it's got quite a curve on it. So the software is going to attempt to put in a lot of support material uh, because the it just won't work in trying to print this without something supporting it. The, the material will just fall down. So let's see what it looks like after I tweak all the settings and prepare to print. Okay, and here we are after it's decided how it's going to go about doing the printing. S look back at the layers. You can see that it's starting to build the cup at the bottom, but it's generated all of this support material to hopefully help the the bottom of it print without uh, s sagging down. But once we get to this point, uh, everything's good. No more support needed. We go all the way up to the top into some very fiddly, highly detailed bits up here, and then we're done. And we're looking at 19 hours and 15 minutes worth of print time because I've got it on the highest possible resolution. And it's you can see down here, it's 1,102 layers to get from the bottom to the top. So that's pretty amazing that the printer can run at that uh, kind of resolution. So let's kick off the print. And now we've just begun the printing. You can see we've gotten through a few layers at the bottom, along with the 5% infill for strength. That's as far as we've gotten. It's about 3 millimeters, maybe 4 millimeters. And I'll get back to you in 19 hours when the print is finished. Well, here we are. 19 hours and 18 minutes later. And we have our command module. The level of detail is just amazing. And on the finest uh, print level that the printer can do, the uh, 
sorry about the shadow it's just great so let me pop it up uh, clean off the supports and then I'll figure out how to paint it okay I brought the plate up off the printer because that hairspray doesn't stick very well used my pie extraction tool pop you pop and it just popped right off so that's pretty good that's a, a big aid in getting it off the base because these uh, are actually pretty good the quality is amazing I'm really happy with the way and all the detail here everything came out extremely well except it's a bit rough on the bottom you can see the stringy nature because I I didn't uh, I spaced these maybe too far apart and on the top I only specified four layers of thickness where it's a terminating surface and you can kind of see some thin spots right there and if I use this little flashlight I can actually shine it through and it's coming all the way through from the bottom through the top <clears throat> but that's not the, the worst thing in the world. I am amazed that this bar, which has no support whatsoever, I didn't even notice it in the model, printed perfectly. You can see it's super fragile, but it, it printed fine. The detail is good up here. Again, it got a little thin in spots, and I'm going to have to do some trimming. But overall, I'm pretty happy with that. And now we're done. After painting and sanding, this is how she ended up. I wanted to capture it in its launch configuration, so it's all nice and shiny and silver and gold, as opposed to after splashdown when it's all charred up, because the I, I do not have the skill to paint this thing with a reasonable charred looking. Uh, uh, on it. So the bottom was quite difficult. The, the print was very, very rough and I spent a lot of time sanding this and I painted it this kind of pearlescent color, hopefully to catch the, the ablative surface here on the heat shield. Uh, around the outside, the silver, the windows is good. And the top, I didn't uh, have a lot of reference pictures to work from, so I thought I would go with the gold and a uh, bit of artistic license number 42 with the, uh, the black highlights. The red ring is actually real. I think it looks good. It was a happy diversion. Oh, and in celebration of this, I watched Apollo 13 last night, and you know what those two holes are. That's the urine dump vent. At one point, they eject the pee out the side of the capsule, and you can see it uh, misting out there through those holes. The rest of them are uh, thrusters and other things. But So, fun fact. So thanks so much for the inspiration to print this, and uh, it'll look good up on the shelf. As you stare out on my beach, I would ask you to subscribe to my channel and click like on this video so YouTube thinks I'm worthy again and I have so many people on my channel that they'll give me 10 cents a day in ad revenue. So I thank you for that.